All right, so I am here today. It's a special day today because Mr. Rob Wood, who's our Amazon director, is here with me at the beach, and we're enjoying the weather while doing a podcast. That's right. That's cool. How cool is that, Rob? I think it's fantastic. The weather's getting beautiful. It's not raining, which is awesome. I think it's like it's it's not it's in that middle zone in Florida where it's not quite hot anymore and it's not quite into the winter season, so it's perfect. And you know, it's it's all about freedom, right? You want to be able to be wherever you want to be. That's right. And not be where you don't want to be anymore. That's right. right. That's my definition of freedom. Right. But anyways, now let's get back to reality. <laughs> We're actually in the AGM studio. Uh, you know, true story, I was talking to our creative director and I said, you know, do you think there's any value in having this green screen on the back? And, and then he gave me the idea and we just talked it through and I said, you know what, let's just go with it. Let's Sounds talk great. about that. Sounds great. But this is where we're at. You know, we just so happen to have uh, our podcast table over here, and we have this beautiful green screen on the back that I can. We tell can have you. a stadium back here full of people. Um, yeah, we can do any, anything, yeah. Rob. We can be we can be in space. I now. like it. So for anybody uh, watching, listening to this podcast, if you wanted to experience what we just did right now, you're gonna have to watch the YouTube episode. Right? Sounds good to me. Otherwise, you're gonna be like, "What are these weird dudes talking about?" Right? <laughs> uh, no, we could we could go to we can go to Mars and yep. just do this on the on 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 the planet. We're gonna be Elon. We, we can we can, exactly we can be <laughs> Elon. We can do anything, man. It's it's pretty magical what you can do with a green screen on the back. I love it. I, I told this story the other day, Rob, about um, so we have this fancy uh, green screen now. Totally. This fancy green screen is a thirteen thousand dollar wall. Wow. Right? People don't know that because it looks like paint Green. color yeah. but it has something called an infinity okay. wall okay. so you can get in there and there's all kinds of things that we do with our clients our content and the things that we actually do for our customers but that's not how i started because a thirteen thousand dollar green screen it's something that most people cannot afford yeah right totally. how did i start my first course that i ever did it was called the facebook masters yeah it was a legendary course. Yeah. A lot of people did that course. Yeah. Uh, it was a. It was kind of like my coming out party, and I sold it to thousands of people, yeah. and it was amazing uh, because I had gotten some success. My Amazon brands. We're going to yep. talk about Amazon today, by That's the right. way. My Amazon brands were doing well. I was able to start a brand on Amazon, and I was able to exit that brand on Amazon. And I recorded a course to mm -hmm. talk about what I was doing with social media marketing to help these brands grow, including my own brand and what I had accomplished. Yeah. That course was done with on a very small room yep. that had no soundproofing. Wow. So it was absolutely like noise coming in. Like a, the air conditioner was a problem. Uh, people talking on other rooms was a problem. It was a disaster, right? Wow. I did that course. You did that course? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to tell me that story in a second. But yeah. the course that, that you did, Rob, yeah, and yeah. a lot of thousands of people, they did. Uh, we sold millions of dollars on it. Yeah. So just as a lesson for anybody watching or listening to this, let me tell you what I did. I had some money. I was okay. But I, I wasn't at the stage that I'm at that I can build a studio that is like $100,000 studio like this. Totally. What I did was that I had knowledge. Mm -hmm. I sat down mm -hmm. and I wrote down what I believe was the path for anybody to go down the same path that I had been. That makes sense. So I created modules and I said, step number one, you got to establish your purpose. Step number two, module two. And then I put lessons in between. Yeah. And um, I bought an Amazon bed sheet because somebody said, it's cool if you actually share your screen and mm -hmm. if you are on the camera. And I said, okay, cool. So maybe I should do a green screen. My green screen was a $20 Amazon <laughs> green bed sheet. Wow. True story. I went to Amazon and I searched green bed sheets and yeah. I found one and I got some tacks and I you hung, it, hung up. it on the wall. Wow. And I had a camera, which right now, uh, the cameras that I have are a joke compared yeah. to the camera that I had back then. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because Target. my my creative director in Puerto Rico for Natural Slim, mm -hmm. he said, when you're, all your cameras break down, mm -hmm. this is what he said about my camera for my course, right? When your all your cameras break down, all three of them that we have right now here we're utilizing. Yeah. And then your cell phone signal dies and you are unable to record with your cell phones and every single cell phone around you is dead and you got no choice, you try to get a Polaroid first. If you still cannot get a Polaroid, <laughs> you use that camera that you use for your course. Wow. It was, it was exaggerating a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my equipment. And I actually had to put my laptop somewhere. Yep. So I brought in a card box. 
And that's the course that you did that wow. sold for $2,000. Wow. And it was a legendary course. A lot of people did. It helped a lot of people. We ended up getting at some point somewhere around 600 testimonials for this particular wow. course. So if you have information, if you have knowledge, if you have value to give it to the world, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Yeah. You can just put it together and launch it. And with a smart marketing strategy, yeah. like what was my marketing strategy? I got in front of somebody that was a, a genius that had an audience yeah. and I won him over. And this person was called Ben Cummings. Yeah. And I gave him value and I said, value, 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 value. Until he said, Manuel, can you come and talk to my audience? Manuel, can you put a course together? Manuel, can you let me promote your course? And how did you start that conversation? Like what, was, what was the entrance point? I know your story, but there's pieces that, that I haven't, like the transition is what interests me. Yeah. So I got really into marketing yeah. and Amazon and getting really good at it. Yeah. And I obsess over training. And I was consuming, 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 consuming. I was implementing along the way. Because, totally. by the way, that's the formula, right? Yeah. You got to have a balance. At the beginning of your career yeah. in the world of business, in the world of marketing, you got to have a very, very close balance between learning and implementation. And doing. You can't be just learning 5% of the time. Yeah. Because 95% of your implementation is going to be trash totally. because you're not learning enough right totally. so i had a really good balance of 50 50 50 yeah. percent of my time because i had a nine to five uh mm -hmm. 50 percent of my time was spent on learning and the other 50 percent was spent on implementing wow so i started getting results and um i had a, an amazon brand which still today a big amazon oh, wow. brand which, yeah. which i exited it's called yeah. it was called cozy house collection yeah. c-o-s-y house collection for anybody that wants to look it up. I believe they're on track to break $100 million this year. Wow, and you started that from scratch. I started that, I created the brand, I created the marketing, I built the website, I did the Amazon listings, I did the whole thing wow. from start to finish. My first employee ever, who's still with me today, mm -hmm. now is your direct junior, his name is Jay. Wow. And he built the brand with, with me together. Jay's I, a vital part of my team. Absolutely. He, he's my number one tr most trusted. I can assign him to do anything, he just figures it out, and I just totally trust his, his judgment. That's yeah, when I, when I said I need to get some help, yeah. uh, and I reached out to companies, yeah. he was the first one I ever found. Yeah. And seven years later, he's still with us today, yeah. which is amazing. So anyways, the, um, the story was with Ben Cummings was that he was teaching us. Yeah. So you, you've heard a part of the story that Jason Flatland is the first one that I ever got a webinar from. Totally. He yep. sold me a course, an AGM client now, somebody that I respect that's probably the greatest marketer alive today. That's special of a guy. Mm -hmm. right? So Jason Flatland brought me into the course. I bought the course. It was called Amazing Selling Machine. Mm -hmm. I didn't care for Amazing Selling Machine as much. Okay. I went into their training and it was Jason Flatland training yep. with a lot of webinars and training, follow-ups, et cetera. And then he introduced me into Ben Cummings. And mm. Ben Cummings became connected with Jason Flatland and he created a program called Fast Track Program. Oh, yeah. So I spent a couple of years, maybe a year and a half or so, learning from Ben three times a month. Wow. Every, every single, almost every week, it was free trainings a month. Wow. He would do a three hour webinar. And this was a great teacher. Three hours. Three hour webinar. I mean, I'm in the middle of writing my book uh, wow. right now. I have a list of the people that I have have been important in my life. Mm -hmm. Jason, Ben are right there. Right? Wow. I got my father. I got Gary Vaynerchuk, who gave me some initial ideas on marketing. Yeah. Following that, I got Ben Cummings and Jason Flatley. That's amazing. They're that big in my life, that important. So he, he Ben was very into, he was the first one that taught me yeah. how to really give value to an audience. Interesting. He really did show me because he was very into it. He would spend yeah. three hours on one webinar, no breaks, teaching people Amazon strategy. Was it live Amazon Q and A? Well, it wasn't Q and A. Oh, okay. He had webinar slides. It was okay. live. It was okay. live. Yep. But he had a presentation ready for three hours. For three hours. Wow. And sometimes he would spend two hours and fifteen minutes, and then forty-five minutes Q and A. Yeah. But it was so much value. Wow. So much value and so much like intelligent stuff. Was it just Amazon? Or was it Amazon? Just and Amazon. Or, okay. Just Amazon. But as you know, these yeah. two worlds are very connected. Yes. The 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 very successful Amazon sellers are also great marketers. Yes. Ben Cummings was a genius marketer. I'm yeah. talking to, I'm talking about him as if he died. He didn't. He's very <laughs> alive. His problem is that he retired. Yeah, totally. He's, he said, I'm done, right? Yeah. Like, I made enough money. I won money. the game, I'm good. I won the game. Uh, yeah. Who knows? He might be planning some other things, a comeback, because he, he's he's in good shape. Yeah. He's a healthy guy. He's, like, super smart. He, he, this guy is very special. Yeah. So I, I got his value, yeah. and I kept on getting trained. Uh, yeah. with his value. And I was building my bed sheets, Brian. I was building, building, building. And were you on Facebook at that point in time? Rob, we can talk yeah. about this so long, I know, right? Because it's so amazing what this journey, right? Like my initial 
Facebook training yeah. was given to me by Ben Cummings, right? But then didn't you eventually teach him? I became his number one teacher for the subject for years. Wow. So I taught his audience afterwards. So we're skipping already the story yeah, yeah, yeah. quite a bit, but I actually did a training in which he's teaching us the Facebook ba basics and he's teaching us business manager and how to advertise your products and how to get traffic to your Amazon listings, how to get them to convert and how to do lead generations and coupon giveaways and all these things. Those were all trained. Like I literally still today have SOPs, yeah. which are, will, be, will be a great experiment for you to go through. I would love that to. Ben come and set up himself. Wow. And I used to implement some of the initial strategies on Facebook. Wow. And that was like the big awakening for me. And I just went super deep in Facebook. Yeah. And as I went super deep on it, what happened was that they launched a software called Amazon Launchpad. And the Amazon Launchpad was a very expensive software. Yeah. At that point, I was making enough money. Uh, Ernesto and I, who's still my partner today here with us, I've always been the decision maker, right? Totally. So I didn't really ask permission, you know? So <laughs> We're going. <laughs> ask forgiveness, not permission, right? That's the way it is. Um, so I just went in. I bought a $10,000 program yeah. and it was a ranking program for Amazon. Back in the day, things were very different. This is totally. 2016, 17. Uh, so I went really heavy into using the software mm -hmm. and I became the number one student of the program. And the way that I connected with Ben, that he ended up opening up his eyes to me was, again, this is somebody, mm -hmm. if you guys do the math, he had somewhere around 600 students. Okay. And these 600 students were each paying $300 a month for his continuity program. What's the math on that, Rob? $180,000 a month from recurring revenue. So do you think that's power as a, as a teacher? That is. You know, if you think about the average teacher in the country, they make somewhere around fifty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, right? Yeah. A year. He was making $180,000 a month from teaching people Amazon. That's amazing. And people adored him. That's amazing. They absolutely adored the guy. And the audience won over. Was he also selling at the point in time? He had his own brand. He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't announce it publicly. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I found out all over the years what yeah. the brand was, sure. and he did bring in exclusive, like he created special masterminds with only 15, 20 people, and he would talk about what he was doing. Makes sense. But the Amazon culture, and we can talk about that throughout yeah. today, was has has been more like secretive about what it you're has doing. Been. Yeah. So they they haven't, you know, because you know it kind of makes sense if you think yeah. about it, because if you have a brand. Like natural slim is, is a unicorn, right? Yeah. Good luck trying to compete with it. Yeah. Like we have this content machine and what we have going on. I'm close. Mm, go for it, man. I wish you luck, right? Yeah. But a lot of other brands, like let's say a beauty brand or a makeup brand or a garden brand or whatever, it's so Delicious. easy to come and freaking replicate the whole thing. Totally. Copy the whole thing. Yeah. Adjust a little bit the messaging, change the images, and off you go with your listing. Totally. So I could understand why the Amazon culture was like, don't talk about your brand publicly. Yeah. You know, because they didn't have the scenario, the Dr. Berg scenario, yeah. the Frank Suarez natural slim scenario. Yeah. They're very difficult to replicate. Yeah. People cannot be. That's why I call them content unicorns, right? They really are unicorns. So they had, he had his own brand and he was very good at it. Uh, he, he was saying one of his best products was like a um, wine aerator. You know what that is? Totally. Right? <laughs> so he was really good at it. And he did beauty creams and other things along the way, right? But he would teach us some of the strategies. Interesting. And See, that's product selection. Product selection, yeah. yeah. Exactly, because he had a lot of training on that. you have to be defensive. That. Right. If you don't have a brand with unicorn and all these other kind of strategies, you right. have to, the selection is more important. Right, absolutely, yeah. big deal. Uh, I know you have a list of things to no, cover. It's all good. So anyways, the point is that I obsess. Here's, here's the thing that, that I do, Rob. Yeah, yeah. I obsess over connecting with people that are powerful. Makes I obsess sense. over it. Not because I want something from them. Yeah. Because I really want to provide value. Yeah. Like it's it's a, it's, a, it's a personal obsession of mine. And every time that these connections happen, magical things happen. Yeah. And I have proven that time and time again. And that's the reason why I have a wall of fame in my building that you get to work here every day. Yeah. That wall of fame shows you my obsession with all these power people in the world. Yeah. So, because I know that I can provide value to them. Some people ask me, what is your greatest secret to success? I'm like, I just look for incredible people and I look for how to lift them and take them to a whole new level and give them my value. Yeah. Obsessively create value to them, which is, it's a lesson in itself to any single human being out there trying to be better. Totally. Look to connect with power. Like Rob, you want to grow an AGM? Sure. What's the most important person you can connect with an AGM? You. Absolutely. <laughs> if you connect with me, you give me the responsibility over lifting you. Totally. All right? Like if you connect with your next door staff member, yeah. 
he doesn't have the same power in this company as I do, right? So if you give me value, if you obsess over lifting this organization and giving me what I want out of this group, it's an inevitable source for you to grow, right? I do that at the next level, right? I look for these people, Grant Cadone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Chick Corea, Nancy Cartwright, Damon John, Jason Flatland, like, the list goes on and totally. on, right? Totally. I have a lot of people that over the years I've been able to connect with and give them my power totally. without asking anything in return. And along the way, I've gotten a lot of power. Yeah. I did that with Ben Cummings. I just said, J- uh, um, Ben, I, I found an email line to communicate to him. Okay. And I said, Ben, uh, check out what is happening. I will tell you somewhere around 15 emails that I sent, maybe once every couple of weeks. Wow. What can I have or something like that? I, I got to show you this, Ben. Blah, 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 blah. Me as a student being a fan of his training, wow. I found an email line for the teacher and I would me- message him. He would not respond to me Wow. 15 times. Most people would have given up on the second or third attempt. Totally. Not me. Yeah. I'm crazy, man. <laughs> that crazy leads to success. Totally. So 15 messages until one day he said, this is uh, somewhere around October 2016, right? Okay. And well, this is amazing what you're doing. I'm talking about ranking strategies on Amazon. I was giving him the evidence, screenshots, what I was doing on Facebook, how I was getting peanuts for reaching people. Like I was literally getting millions of people to see my brand, wow. faceless brand, going to Amazon, purchasing stuff, lead generation on steroids. Like things were like, I was doing $600,000 on Betches a month at this point yeah. using this his trainings. Six years five, ago. Six years ago. 2016, I'm going on seven years on this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So I get a response from him and he said, Manuel, I have an event coming up in Las Vegas, exclusive, 50,000 people. 50,000? Uh, I'm sorry, not to, um, 50 people is what I meant to 50, say. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 50 people, very exclusive. It's a lot of people. 50,000 is not really exclusive, right? <laughs> that goes beyond like, yeah. exclusivity. So he had, he had an event to 50 people. Okay. So it was going to be 100 total. Okay. He was going to do two days, 50, and other two days, 50. Okay. Very exclusive. Same content, different audience? Same content, different audience. Uh, for some reason, he couldn't find a bigger room, so he just booked out four days in total. Yeah. Uh, and he said, would you mind coming to uh, this event and speaking for free? I'll let you come in for free, and I'll let you be a part of it. Wow. And I want to see if you will be interested in talking about what you've been doing with our program and with our stuff to our audience. And at that point, I said, I don't know how to speak then, yeah. I didn't say that publicly. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm in. Figure it out. And that was the first time I ever got on stage. It was yeah. January 2017. And I got on stage. And I don't think I even have content from that stage. And you I delivered. for sure, I think. It, it was very like, I was dressed very casually. Yeah. You might have seen one of me with a bigger stage with Ben. Um, That's what I'm thinking the, of. No. That's not different It's one. before. Got right? it. I did many things with Ben over the years after got that. It. This is like before. It was like me very like scrungy. I was like not well dressed. I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't feel I had the ability to be a speaker. Yeah. I got on stage. My presentation was terrible. Fun fact, mm-hmm. Mr. J. Banlasan helped me with the presentation and he probably remembers, remembers this. Probably. So we put together a presentation. I delivered. I got a standing ovation. People lined up afterwards to ask me questions and I'm like, wow. like I got something here. There's interest. And Ben noticed that yeah. and he was very blown away. He took me out of dinner and shortly after he said, Manu, I think you should be doing a course and I'll promote wow. it to your audience. And that's the thing that started the Facebook Masters program. And I spent wow. six months putting together that training that when I launched it, I stole more money that I could have dreamed about selling in our first week. Yeah. And it's because I had that connection. Wow. You take that connection out of the, out of, out of the way, I'm not here today without yeah. that connection. Now, of course, there's yeah. many connections. Like I had an early connection, my father was a connection. If, if I don't have that connection with my father, I don't have the natural slim brand being built and everything that I did for him to lift him up. Yeah. So there's many, many crucial points in my life, but that one with Ben Cummings, which started with Jason Flatland, yeah. was a crucial point towards my positioning. A lot of people still today watching this video, listen to this podcast, they mm-hmm. came from that era that Ben Cummings was the one that lifted me and put me in front of his audience. He said, this is my guy. This is my social media marketing guy. And I'm yeah. gonna let you guys get trained with his stuff. And I spent several years training and doing stuff with him until one day, sad day, he retired. And he said, Manuel, I'm hanging in my towel. I'm done. I don't know wow. where the future is gonna take me. I'm gonna play tennis. I'm gonna relax and I'm gonna do all these things, but I'm done for now. Wow. Right. So th- that's how I made the connection with Ben. 
That totally makes sense to me. That really is your superpower. I've seen you make some amazing connections. And it's those relationships that, I mean, it flows power to AGM and it flows power to the group. And I've seen it grow even if over the short time that I've been here, basically. Thank you. So, so you see, like, as a lesson, right? I know we've taken up about half an hour of this talk, but there's a major lesson here, right? Totally. Like, if you want to succeed in life, sure. you want to get close to sources of power, totally. a.k.a. the sun in an organization. Totally. You want to provide value to that source of power as much as possible without expecting anything in return. Sure. It's not like I can help you if you give me this. Sure. It's like I can help you, period. I have value to give you. Totally. And these sources of power uniformly find ways to give power back to you. Sure. It is inescapable. Yeah. And if that's not happening, then you're connecting to the wrong sources of power. Yeah, because I have experiences myself. Now I have a lot of you guys under me now totally. that are trying to provide that value, totally. and you put me on the spot in which I have to give that power back, right? Which you do, you do a very good and, job, and I that. work on it. Yeah. But I, I'm still doing that at a larger scale with 100%. people that are that I'm looking at that are trying to like grow and um, do their own games and whatever it is, and I'm looking to just provide value yeah. and help them accomplish their dreams and goals. So anybody that is not on a path to grow themselves. Anybody that is not on a path to dreams and goals that they have for themselves, yeah. you just got to look for those sources of power and connect with them. Yeah. Not like parasites. You just want to like take from them. Totally. You know? Yeah, totally. 100%. You don't want to be like somebody that's just like, oh, I want to connect with you because I want to take from you. Right? Yeah. It's I want to connect with you because I know you got something that I don't have yet. Yeah. Or you know something that I don't know yet. Yeah. And I want to give you everything I got. So you can open up doors along the way for me. Wow. All right. It's very powerful. Wow. Talk about success or development, personal development secrets. That's a major one right there. That totally right? makes sense to me. So that being said, all right, we got <laughs> We got way off topic there, but I really appreciate that. That was very, very That's good. Lightning out. That's good. So we got Mr. Rob Witt here. Um uh Rob, let me just say here publicly that sure. I believe you you are one of the most valuable hires assets that AGM has recruited over the years. Well, thank you. And we've had hundreds of recruits. Some people have come in, some people have gone. Sure. Many people have gone actually, sure. which is fine. It's part of an organization. You have a revolving door. Yeah. People come in and if it's not a good fit by either side, they walk out. You've been with us for close to a year now. Yeah. And it feels like it's been a decade. It does. And um, you came in because we had uh, growth in the department. Yeah. And you have stepped in there and you've done a great job managing that department. And that Thank is the you. Amazon department. That's right. And I'm very connected to the Amazon world still. Yeah. I'm involved. Uh, we have our own natural sim brand growing and doing really well, breaking well. records every month there. Yeah. But you're the one running the show. That's right. And you're always looking for more clients to service and more people to service. Always. We're always doing more like uh, we're creating our own brands together now, which That's is right. cool. Yeah. AGM is working on their own brands. We're going to help like also like grow and you know, with additional partnerships and things like that from what totally. we're learning. Totally. But we want to take a uh, solid 20, 25 minutes, Rob, sure. to go over, to give value to people. They're thinking about having an Amazon brand yeah. starting from scratch yeah. or they want to scale their existing Amazon brand. Let's see if we can have some, give some takeaways to these people. Totally. Right? So my first question to you, Rob, is do you think still Amazon is an opportunity in this environment in 2022 as we are recording this? I would 100% think so. Um, in fact, maybe think is the wrong word. I definitely, I, I know so. And I know because I've seen the success that people can achieve on Amazon. Uh, I mean, Amazon is still, you know, half of all the, all the money spent on online is still on Amazon. And I think that's not going away. They're too dominant. They're too ingrained in society. I think that people expect it now. Just like you're saying, like providing value to people. You know, I, I've always heard it. as like, if you want to be rich, figure out how to make somebody else rich. Like that kind of a philosophy, which... And I think Amazon provides the ability for a lot of people to do very, very well. I know entire businesses that, that got built off of some guy writing a book and publishing it on Kindle, which you can do for a hundred bucks or something like this, right? And then and now he has massive business because of that. So um, I think that's never going to go away. And there's lots of different ways to do that. And it really depends on what your goal is and what your, your brand is. But ultimately, for any brand to build, they have to build off Amazon as well. Otherwise, you're always uh, competing with the Amazon sellers. You're always, it, there's always a bit of a race to the bottom. PPC costs are, are always going up. They've basically doubled over the past two years. I think that won't go away. Um, so the cost per click is at a, a whole new level now. Yeah. It's, it's harder to get traffic to your listings. Yes, it's more Via expensive. the Amazon platform. Which one of the amazing things about Amazon is, I'm excited for a minute, is uh, 
nowhere else in the world can you launch a brand new product and pay a couple of bucks and show it next to a brand name product. Like you're never going to go to Target and get your product on the same shelf and even get the opportunity to sell that customer. On Amazon, you pay a little bit of PPC, you do some decent images, and you can have your, your product next to the big brand names. Nowhere else in the world can you do that. So yes, there's still tons of opportunity. Uh, it's more niches. It's, it's more like finding an unserved audience. It's, it's back to the basics of marketing, like finding an audience, finding a problem that's not being solved and solve that problem better than anybody else does. So I think right. we're almost coming full circle to where, like you said, the good marketers will always be in business because the guys who kind of got in off of the, you know, Wild Wild West days or when, th when the black hat things were a bit more acceptable, there's more of these techniques, but those guys are kind of falling off the wayside. And I think now, even more than ever, there's a uh, mass opportunity for good marketers to do very, very well. Totally. Yeah. So just for positioning purposes, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rob Wood is managing close to $100 million a year That's right. in revenue. That's right. Somewhere around 7 to $9 million a month are being produced from what you manage. And that includes like the Dr. Berg brand, the Natural Slim brand, the Dr. Living Good brand, and yeah. a bunch of other clients that we've had yep. over the years. And um, in general, we have a booming department that has a lot of data yes. in that area. Yeah. So, so Rob, so what are you seeing? Like, uh, any advice on opportunities when it comes to markets? Because obviously you, we do a lot of supplements here and totally. we do have other brands, but what are you seeing as opportunities right now to position oneself? Uh, you're talking about like product selection, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, I mean, obviously we're heading into the holiday season. So there's always going to be those types of, of products that, uh, there's always gonna be a market for. Um, there's, there's an entire business model that I've, I've thought about sometimes, which is like, because TikTok is so uh, popular these days, and I think that the, 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 the speed at which a product can, be, can become viral on TikTok is, has uh, shortened the window of how long it's gonna take to get a product market. I, I like to state here ahead, that TikTok in. is right now the most popular website on planet Earth. There you go. Nobody has ever overtaken Google yep. and for the first time ever, not Facebook, not Instagram, no one wow. ever was above google.com when it comes to traffic. Wow. TikTok is the most traffic website on the planet as of right now. See, I didn't know that fact, but I've seen the back end of it. So when you look for like what product is most trending on, on Amazon right now, it's very often TikTok products. Crazy. And you'll see like, like for a while, the, the number one search keyword was like, TikTok pants and it had gone viral in January. I think it's January of last year. And so it is not even necessarily the most current, uh, but it just shows you how real it is. And up until like October, it was still trending. And it maybe got, got enough number one to like number five, but it's still these trends. So I think if you have uh, a good supplier relationship and you can bring products to market very fast, you can take advantage of those and even predict the trends and, and have that product available for sale, which I think no one's really doing that to my knowledge. Some people try to jump on the bandwagon, but if you, were really ingrained in social media and you really understood the, the, how to make things viral, which you do. It's not necessarily a business, but it's definitely a way to make money. If that makes any sense. I totally. Mean, you're more into brand building, which I think is a long-term solution, but that's a great market that's not being served. So, so here's the thing, right? So brand building, the reason why I'm, I'm a big fan of that is yeah. it's because it really works yeah. and it's really effective. Yeah. And right now, for example, the natural slim brand, yeah. which is going to sell middle in the year, yeah. right? It's yeah, a yeah. very, very impressive number. Huge. We're built on this content unicorn model Yeah. that, you know, for example, in the month of August, we posted 3,200 times organically wow. across social media between Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, um, LinkedIn, podcasts, etc. Yeah. So it was a lot of communication. Yeah. And that communication leads to me not having to spend money on advertising. Totally. I really don't. Totally. When most brands out there are dependent on advertising yeah. and if they get shut down by Facebook, oh my God, Facebook shut me down and the world falls apart. Totally. Or if a channel gets shut down or something happens that the channel is not working anymore, the algorithm change or whatever, yes. they die. Yeah. I don't depend on advertising. Yeah. But here's the thing. 
The reason why I'm so comfortable talking about Natural Slam as a brand and our strategy is because good luck trying to be like us. Totally. It is a big challenge to try to replicate our model because we are content unicorns. Totally. And a unicorn doesn't exist. Just like the Dr. Bergs of the world don't really exist. The Natural Slams of the world don't really exist in this particular way. Totally. I don't disrespect at all the yeah. people that don't go down this route because it really is very, very difficult to go down that route. Yeah. So I actually, I was spoiled. Sure. In the first few years of my this first, my first official client, who was he? A content unicorn. <laughs> my father, Frank Suarez, all right? Totally. So then I had a, a couple of other smaller clients right along the way, but yeah. then one of my first few clients, maybe number five or six all time, mm -hmm. when Dr. Berg hired me, wow. I was about, we were like eight or 10 staff in the company. Wow. We're 112 right now. Yes. So we've been together for like six years, right, with Dr. Berg. Like I've literally helped him every step of the way, built his entire ecosystem for many years, and we're really, really close like that. Yeah. Also another content unicorn. Totally. So then I get Dr. Berg, and I get my dad, and I'm like, well, I can make anybody a Frank Suarez, or I can make. I was disabused with that idea very, very fast. Mm -hmm. People came to me and they said, I want to be the next Dr. Berg. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And then it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. So people that can- the content wasn't as good. Because the content, so or, so there's there's free things on the content side of things, right? Yeah. Free things. Mm -hmm. Number one, consistency. Yeah, makes Number sense. one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Berg has been committed yeah, for many years. That's my problem. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, you started totally. doing content on TikTok and you dropped it, right? I did. I, I've, I've been wanting to make content since I first read Gary Vee's book in 2009. Okay, well, if you don't get that point in, <laughs> everything else falls apart, right? That's true. So on the content side of things, number one is commitment. Totally. You got to say, I'm going to do one video a day. Yeah. Rain, shine, atomic Bad bombs, weather, COVID, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You put one video out a day. Totally. So that makes a content unicorn. Totally. Somebody committed to their message. Totally. If they're not committed, it's not happening. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Senior to number two. But number two is very important, and that's quality of the message. Mm. Quality. Not quality of the cameras, not quality of the audio, not quality of a freaking green screen behind, none of that. Yeah, the content. The message, the content, right? Yeah. Are you giving people actual value without demanding that they pay for something? Sure. Right? Sure, does it sure. have a beginning? Does it have an end? Is it attention grabbing? Are they getting somebody that they can apply right now and see results? Mm -hmm. The quality of that message needs to be in. And that is, now they start collaborating, right? Now we got consistency. Sure. And now we have quality of message. Yeah. And last but not least, we move into quantity. And you can see those elements in our brand, Natural Slim. My father sure. passed away almost two years ago. Sure. I lost him. And uh, obviously, we still have a lot of emotion connected with him. My dad was a giant in our world. He was an absolute giant. Yeah. I love him to death. And my building is dedicated to him. My book is dedicated to him. All of it. This guy was incredible. Yeah. But... He's still living in this world through his content. Yes. And that's what a true legacy is. So his content was published more than anybody else out there alive this last month. It's amazing. Imagine that, right? It's amazing. There's all these people still carry, carrying around bodies that don't come close to my dad who passed away almost two years ago. Yeah. 3,200 publications across the world of Natural Slim, mm -hmm. Metabolismo TV, yeah. uh, Frank Suarez, we are omnipresent. Yeah. And because of that, you know, we have this incredible machine that doesn't really depend on advertising. Sure. So replicating what my father was is very close to impossible. Yeah. So we've been fortunate over the years, uh, Rob, that we've had a couple of additional unicorns come into our world because they, they do exist, right? Yeah. Uh, another great, great client of us um, has a great brand called Living Good Daily. Yeah. He's a great content creator. He really is. Right? So talking about business, Jason Flatland, one of my mentors. Yeah. I love him to death. Such an incredible guy. Smartest marketing mind I know, yeah. personally. Great content creator, absolutely amazing, right? In what sequence would you recommend doing the organic content? Like what, from what I've seen with Dr. Berg, Natural Slim, uh, Dr. Living Good, that their content off Amazon has way more effect on Amazon than the things that I do on Amazon. And like my, my, I see my, my role is uh, you guys generate the attention and I monetize it in some ways. I have to do my job well and there's lots of things that have to go into that. Um, but at what point launching a new brand would you recommend incorporating the organic content strategy? So I, and then what would you expect? I would definitely do it concurrently. Okay. Uh, you can call that like passive sales on yes, Amazon. Makes sense. Because you don't really track them 
well, yes. you just see the sales going up. Right? Yeah. Like, so natural slim sells millions a month, right? Probably. Absolutely. Yep. And we serve as a Latin American community. Yep. Correct? Yes. If you download the list of names, which yes. we have done in the past, yep. do we have American names or do we have Latin names? In Most there? Latin names. Correct. Yeah. So that what does that tell you? Our discovery is yep. not via the Amazon platform. Nope. Our discovery is via the social media world. Totally. People find us on social media. On TikTok, we have viral content. Sure. Facebook, viral. Instagram, viral. YouTube channel is massive. We have sure. two channels, millions of subscribers. It took 15 years to build that or 10 years or whatever, right? 2012, uh, March 2012 sure. is the first time we uploaded a video on YouTube. Sure. 2012. So, so that's a decade right now. Yep. So anybody that's serious about business, you should be willing to invest a decade in building your business. Now, exactly. granted, Natural Slim has been growing for years. Yeah. Our first million dollar year mm -hmm. in the United States I believe was in 2016 or 17. Got it. Our first million dollar year. Got right? it. And then we grew six, 10, 12, 20, 40, right? Totally. So we've been on an aggressive trajectory, yep. but social media and using the opportunities on these platforms, mm -hmm. not trying to create opportunities yeah. is the thing that that created that explosion for us. That makes sense. A hundred percent. So you, you're building a brand. Um, it's It's been quite popular these days over the past couple of years to build a brand on Amazon and sell it. And even in the Freedom Tech course, they, they, they talk about you make half your money from selling the business as opposed to actually running the business. Uh, but that's a two to five year cycle, depending on how you run it. Do you think it still makes sense? For Natural Slim? No, no. Obviously, Natural Slim, you're, you're never going to sell, and that's different. And some of my clients never want to sell. They want to run the business for the next 20 years. Some of them are trying to flip the business. Well, the reason why I wouldn't sell uh, particularly, I'm not saying never, sure. uh, because you never know. Sometimes you don't sell your entire company. You sell a part of it, 100%. and then you collaborate, and okay. they open up doors. Sure. Um, but I wouldn't let go of it because it's a legacy thing, and sure. it's an emotional thing, and it's my family, and it's my dad's mission and passion. Yeah. So I'm always going to feel attached to it. It's the one thing that I'm keeping close to me about, yes. about my relationship with my dad. It's like it's something that I you created it. I'm, I mean, he would yeah. be like freaking flipping out and his grave would just be like right now opening up wide <laughs> if he hears us talking about selling his brand. Right? Totally. <laughs> well, what, what, what I mean more is for, for someone for, for, for like as advice for a potential client or current client who maybe obviously doesn't have Frank Suarez, doesn't have a unicorn necessarily, but they're considering getting into that because they've built a business on Amazon. They're making That's what money. I want to talk about, right? Yeah, because so, so because most point, people are not those unicorns, right? Totally. Most people so, don't so, have So what that. are they going to do if they don't have a Frank Suarez? What are the other options for someone out there? So if you don't have a Frank Suarez or a Dr. Berg mm -hmm. or a Dr. Living Good or one of these like content creators sure. that your brand is built around, because it's right. not just, an, I just happen to have like natural experts, right? It's sure. Nutrition, supplements experts, yeah. but across the board i mean yeah. you can be a chef right yeah. like, and uh, you can be uh having you have you have an entire kitchen brand of like, like knives and all that whatever. stuff right yeah. and yeah. if you get the attention on social media i mean there's some amazing content sure. creators like flavor flav that guy does incredible content uh man his his steaks look like they make you like salivate it's incredible <laughs> that guy his brand sells like crazy wow. because he has attention, right? So the name of the game is attention. That's yeah. why I'm I'm very happy that I chose the name AGM in yeah. our company. I'm realizing they look like a, that, that's supposed AG. to be an AGM right here, right? A stands for attention. We are attention grabbing media. So it's the correct name because if you grab attention, the world opens up, right? Yeah. Let's say that you feel that you don't want to be a content unicorn. Sure. You want to be behind the screen. You want to sure. be like me back in the day of like selling bed sheets. Sure. I didn't care about like getting in front of the camera and going on that route. Yeah. The name of the game is still attention. Yes. At the end of the day, you still want to capture attention. So what you still have to do mm -hmm. is put together strategies, Rob, okay. so you can capture attention that don't rely on your pretty face. You got to generate identities. You got to bring in people to your list. You gotta have an email list to nurture and provide value yeah. and educate and inspire. You wanna have a list of phone numbers to text. You wanna create a social media following and you can create content that is faceless. There is a brand that is an amazing brand. Yes. Does not have a face. Their name is Purple. That's literally their name. The mattress? The mattress company. I have one. You have one of those? I do, I love it. That's an incredible brand built on social media. Yeah. That brand is built 
on the social media platform. Yeah. And they have, uh, granted, it's 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 a big thing to get to a level in which you can accomplish what these guys do yeah. because they create incredible content. Yes. But they don't have a personal brand. Yeah. They just create great content. Yeah. And you can reverse engineer, by the way, any of you guys looking to understand what a brand is doing on social media, if you admire them, you respect them, you feel they're great, they're competitors, I would recommend that you make a list of 10 of your competitors mm -hmm. and look them up on the ad library of Facebook. Yeah. And how do you I've do that? Mm -hmm. You've done this before. Yeah. You go to Google and you, you type in Facebook ad library. The first result is gonna literally be the ad library. Yeah. And then you type in the name of your competitor yeah. and you select all ads across the United States or whatever country. And then you look at what they have going on. And you should get inspiration. Yeah. The type of content, the type of copy, the call to actions, the messaging, those things really get you going. So there's a lot of things that you can do, yeah. right, on the world. Those are all paid strategies, is that correct? For running ads, not necessarily because okay. you can look at how to create organic content. Okay, so I, I have a client right now who is wants to launch a skincare brand, which I would say that, that skin cream, skin, like those, that, those, that kind of market is very competitive but there's so many niches in it that you could be successful if you position yourself correctly. They don't want to make their own content. And so I'm faced with, it's like you can pay for attention or you can generate it organically. And organically is way more valuable, but way more work is kind of the way I see it. Does that sound about right? right. Yeah. So they're not going to grow organically. It's not going to happen. Right. So they're going to they're, they're pay to play. So they're going to invest so much money for such a period of time. And there's much less guarantee of success. Cause I mean, the statistics on businesses, succeeding and failing is correct discouraging <laughs> yeah so the the organic route <laughs> yeah. and just becoming a content machine yes right and start doing this it's a commitment so they right? should just bite the bullet and do it correct there's a commitment okay. it's quality but but here's the thing yeah. like if the passion is in and there so what did i say commitment usually that commitment requires passion right yeah of course so if they don't have it there it's not going to happen right yeah so commitment quantity um, commitment, quality of message, and quantity. If if these people don't feel like doing it, yeah, don't even advise them to do it because it's yeah. they're gonna fail at it, right? You sense. you gotta have a, a desire to help other people with your information. That's key. Yep. If you don't have the desire, yeah, and all you gotta do is like you wanna just sell your products because you wanna be able to afford your life. It's just money. It's not gonna work, right? Yeah. The content route is not gonna work. The one common denominator, again, Rob, you know yeah. that I work for a lot of amazing people. Totally. Yeah. The one common denominator with every single one of these guys is impact, yeah. influence, desire to help other people. Yeah. Like uniformly. Yeah. They all have an, a desire to help others. Yeah. So if you take that out of the equation, it doesn't really happen. Yeah. It's it's quite incredible, right? It's marketing magic, right? That's just the way it is, right? So if these guys don't have that marketing magic in them, yeah. a desire to spread their message, to help other people with their products and services, to really create an impact in their lives, yeah. then it's not gonna happen, right? So what you do is you adjust. Yeah. That's not that doesn't mean that you can't help them. A lot of people watching this thing don't have that impact. They're, they're, that desire, that passion, right? Totally. A lot of people watching this thing or listening to this, they want to make more money only. They don't sure. want to change the world. Sure. And that's all right. We can still help them. Totally. But it's a different route. It is. And you got to be honest and you got to be sincere with it, yeah. right? So uh, there's a formula that I, that I learned from Jason Flatland mm -hmm. that he mentions um, just last weekend, we talked about it on his, on his mastermind. Value plus sincerity equals success. Value plus sincerity equals success. Interesting. So when you provide value, yeah. right? An and you're sincere place. about it, yeah. you're gonna have success. So if you put somebody to create content yeah. for something that they don't wanna do, is that sincere? No. Correct, so it's not gonna work. Yeah. You're already starting on something that is guaranteed to fail. Yeah. So don't do it. Yeah. Only start the content route if you really are, maybe you're shy about it, sure. but you really want to help. Like you, yeah. Rob, you're passionate about it. Thank you. You really want to help. All you got to do is get out of your shyness or considerations or whatever and get it going because you already have the desire to help others. Sure. It's in there. So you qualify for being a content machine. Thank you. That's the number one thing. If you don't have that passion element in place, Forget about it. Don't even do it. I'm passionate about marketing. I live it. I breathe it. I'm always thinking about it. I can't stop. I'm obsessed with the subject. Yeah. I really, truly am. Yeah. It's a flaw of my character. All right? So that's how I am. Even with my kids, I'm like, they, they. I start using my phone too much, and they'll be like, yeah, but you got to give us some attention. I'm like, dude, 
I'm giving you a quality of life yeah. that most people can dream of, all right? Yeah. You gotta give me some slack sometimes and just let me do my thing sometimes, but I promise I'm gonna work on it myself, all right? Yeah. I still take them out on vacations, I still do things with them, I give them time, I got all these things going on with them. Yeah. But sometimes I try to make them understand, listen, I can't turn this off, all right? Yeah. Do you want me to be unhappy? If I wanna be, if you want me to be happy, you gotta let me be. Because this switch doesn't have an off position. It freaking doesn't have it. Probably. That's passion, right? Probably. When you have that in place, you're guaranteed to eventually win. When are you gonna win? That's gonna depend on the quality of your message and the quantity of your message and your consistency. When, but you will inevitably win. Yeah. Some people win faster, Sure. some people take longer. But if you stick with the program and you just do it consistently, you will win. Yeah. So your client, right, sure. that doesn't wanna do it, yeah. you gotta come up with strategies to compensate with the fact that that is not their route. Makes sense. That is not their route. They're choosing a different route. You need to do email marketing for them, yeah. SMS marketing. You're trying to communicate with people and give them value that doesn't require content from a face, from a personal brand. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to go down a route similar to Purple in which they don't have a personal brand connected with the brand and they've yeah. done an incredible job. And you wanna generate identities, generate prospects, nurture them, educate them about your brand inspire them, give them stories about uh, about your brand, how you formed it, how you're very, very into helping uh, individuals with your small business, how your family own operated business. Yeah. All that stuff is like, that's where it comes in. And you wanna do that. And on your social media content, you take some of that thing that you're doing on the nurture and you spread it. Sure. Nobody's gonna care that much, but people are still gonna look. Your social media presences are important. 100%. Because you want to make sure that maybe people look for you, they can Find see something. you there. Yeah. It's, it's real estate in yeah. the digital world that is valuable. Yeah. So you want to use it, but you're never going to really take off unless you're one of these guys that really are committed to inspiring, entertaining, and educating people. Interesting. That makes sense. I feel like I almost need to find out what their purpose is yeah. in, the, in this business. So here's the other uh, strategy yeah. to to give uh, some, some additional value. Sure, sure. There are people out there mm -hmm. that are really good. They're not business builders. They're not entrepreneurs, but yeah. they're really good at communicating. Yeah. And they're looking for opportunities to make money. Sure. And in this world, they call them influencers. Yeah. So a brand that doesn't have a personal brand, I will put a lot of attention on finding influencers on the TikTok world, on the Facebook and Instagram world, and even on the YouTube world that can talk about their products and give information about them, unboxing, uh, testimonials, uh, reviews, etc., yeah. and these people have audiences that pay attention. These yeah. people do not know how to build a business, but yeah. they sure as heck know how to communicate, and that's something to leverage uh, for sure. And there's opportunities left and right in that area. There's a website called Bazaar Voice. I haven't used it yet, mm -hmm. but I know we're using it to gather testimonials for Dr. Berg. Bazaar is B A B as in boy A Z A A R Voice. Yeah. Not affiliated with them, but they find a way to connect you with influencers. There, there's software out there, yeah. programs. If you look at influencer software or programs, you'll be able to find some people that can, um, can do that Can do that for but you. I'll even tell you from what I've seen on the, because I look at the numbers, the client that we, uh, that we have that has been using that, uh, it has not contributed massively to their, to their success. What has contributed is their social media. Really? When I look at what Natural Slim just did over the past four weeks, with the amount of content they've been they've been uh, pushing out with the 24th anniversary deal promotion thing, right. that's acted as like almost like a ranking service on across the whole account. Wow! And I've never seen that before. So, like even so, I think those are important. But what I see creates the biggest effects and really takes the income to a whole other level is all that all that content, all that value in all those other channels, wherever wherever the attention is, you guys put stuff there. Like even if it's a platform that you don't use yourself or whatever, there's still content there so someone can find it. And I think that's that's right. by far what I've seen is the hugest impact. That's a good takeaway. Yeah. So so regardless of the influencer marketing content, it, it's good. It's if still you senior. If you can't, yeah, the most senior thing would be producing your own content and be able to control it. If you can't do that, then fine. You can hire influencers and, uh, you know, if you can't have one face, then you make many faces. Like you, you taught me that basically. Right, right. <laughs> so that's legacy building, yeah. right? Like yeah. they, that's an, another technical term for it. It's called owned media. 
Makes sense. You own it, right? Makes sense. It's your Facebook, your Instagram, your social media followings, your TikTok profiles, your YouTube channels. You own it. Yeah. You're not just paying a little a little piece to somebody that has their own audience to have them talk about your product. So if you had to put a scale, that goes at the top. Yeah. And then there's other strategies to to try to bring in people into your listings. Now, so Rob, anything that you have uh because I'm a, I'm a big believer in for e-commerce brands that don't have personal brands yeah. to to run lead generation strategies and build their own list. Yes, and I have been talking about that for a long time. Yeah, it's vital. Via coupon bonanzas or uh, mini courses or giveaways or whatever the case may be. Is there anything yeah. that you're seeing right now that's working with some of the brand, brands that you work with that are not content unicorns per se? It's a great question. I, I do think it's uh, one of the most vital things. Um, as you know, the internet is always changing. And so things come and go in terms of workability. Um, I have seen that Amazon tries to uh, close the gaps whenever they can. Um, they've launched a new email program recently that's, that's getting a lot of attention. However, the functionality is so limited and the customizations are so limited. You'll have like two options of a headline and then that's it. So I, I think that they're but trying to replace those methods. Um, at this point, I think, you know, having some type of QR code or, or link or, or offer on the product is very vital. And there's different ways of doing that depending on the category. Um, and then- So you can try to leverage the traffic that is already buying your stuff. Exactly. Right? So yeah, so Amazon's giving you traffic and then you're trying to take a piece of that. I think the customers are getting a little bit, they're very familiar with the strategy. I think they're getting a little bit, um, what's the word, uh, worn out on that. So I think you have to come up with creative ways to still attract attention. If you just say, hey, sign up for our newsletter, no one's gonna scan the, scan the QR code, right? So- um, It's just a waste of time. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And money for the car and so forth. So what's one good strategy that we recommend right now that they try out as an insert or as a QR code? Um, so I think uh, any kind of a free product or free sample, depending on the, on the product, I think some kind of a warranty, like I have a, a, a client that does a lifetime warranty on, the, on their product. Uh, I think that's very valuable. It's, it's providing value. And the word that I actually heard the Am an Amazon rep tell me was it's for the benefit of the customer. So if you're just, so the, the takeaway would, would be, what is this customer gonna want and how can I contribute that to them? Do they want a free ebook? Maybe, maybe not, right? Do they want a free soundtrack? Maybe, and, and I can provide that to them. And then in exchange, I get their contact details. So which, I, the product. which I like to add that thanks to this pandemic, mm -hmm the QR code. It's much more mainstream. It's very mainstream now. Yeah. So having a little QR code, you don't even have to explain much. So the copy doesn't have to be long. No. Because it's anybody sees a QR code, yeah. they know exactly what to do with it. Yeah. Because now when you walk into a menu, uh, when you walk into a restaurant, yeah. the menus are QR codes. Yeah. And they have them on the tables. So you go to Miami and every single table is gonna have a, it's just a menu QR, QR code. code, you scan it and that's it. They're, yeah. they're not even given menus anymore. So. Yeah it's become very, very common yeah. to have that on your, on your products. And I believe that's an opportunity for Amazon sellers. I think so too. And it's very professional, very clean. So it doesn't look scammy at all. And that's when packaging, all these kind of things come together. And I think that's a very, very viable vital strategy. Amazing. So that's good value. Rob, yeah. we're going to have to do this again. Sounds good. Look forward uh, to it. Do you have a rapid fire uh, list of things that you want to give to the audience? Because I know you had a bullet point list there. For anybody that's an Amazon seller already or anything that you would like to share from that, the point list that you have over there? Uh, sure. Um, I think that, uh, not I think, I've seen that uh, the product labels and the packaging is one of the most important things that I think is very underrated. So when you're looking at an Amazon listing, like in the search is what I mean, I'm sorry, when you're looking at Amazon search, the customer is gonna choose to click on your product or not. And they only have a few pieces of information. They have your main image, they have your price, they have the number of reviews and, and the ratings, and that's basically it. So that picture is 95% of the decision-making process. And if your label isn't clear and isn't attention grabbing, then you're gonna lose clicks even if you're on the right keyword. So that's what I say. One of the tricks that, that we've been using is take a screenshot of the search, do a mock-up of your product and, and have a graphic designer put it in the search and then just do surveys and just ask people which one is most attention grabbing. There's also like uh, websites like, like, I think PicFu is one of the ones that you can do surveys on images very much, I would rather spend 100 hours getting the best packaging than lose 
ten thousand dollars on on a, on a good product with a bad packaging, and I've seen it time and time again. And th- what do they call that shelf uh, when you want to put it on an image? What's shelf the test word? is what we usually shelf call test. it. We call it the shelf test because okay. you're kind of putting it on the shelf, like in a grocery store, but it's on the Amazon shelf. I want to see how it stands out, yep. how it pops. Yep, and that's okay. desktop and mobile. So about half the the purchases these, these days, and I've seen this increase drastically over the past six months, is from the cell phone. Right. And personally. I buy almost everything I buy on Amazon for my cell phone. Same here. I don't think I've logged into the Amazon desktop in years, actually, years. to be honest. Yeah. Unless I'm trying to do some really ninja research on something. But these days, I'd rather just spend the 20 bucks. And then if I don't like it, I'll throw it away or, or whatever. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna keep on happening right now. 90% of all traffic on websites is mobile. Yep. 10% of purchasers are happening on desktop. Mm. So Amazon is going to keep on going in that direction Huge at some point, yeah. right? So you got to optimize for mobile. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. Anything else on your list? Uh, I would say when you're, when you're launching a brand new product, um, don't try to go for the biggest ranking keywords, go for some of the more longer tail keywords that you'll be easier to mm. rank on. Uh, if you're having difficulty launching your product, niche down and keep niching down until you, until you do find that audience. Uh, oftentimes I've seen products that are kind of failing if they can reposition which again, depends on your, on your label and so forth. If you can reposition, you can find that underserved audience. And maybe, it, maybe you're launching a skin, skin cream and it's not just like, hey, I'll make you look younger, but it's like, hey, I'm skin cream for men that have light skin and have, and have sunspots. And it's very specific, but if you can get, you know, a thousand sales a month on that one product, then you can begin to build your brand based off of the audience. Believe it or not, people are searching for those things. I believe it. They are incredible, uh, yeah. but they're very long. But I think I heard uh, not that long ago that 30% of all searches happening on Amazon today mm-hmm. have never happened before. 30%, I believe it. So they, people, the combination of words they use, how do you use them and how do they add other words to it? Yeah. It's fresh every day, yeah. fresh every day. Yeah. So long tail keywords is a big one. I like it. Okay, one more. So I'd say uh, choose your your product and your category based off of what you know and what you experience. So it's easier to get into the viewpoint of the customer. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that a guy can't sell products for women, but if you can understand your customer, you're still trying to solve a problem. Amazon is a platform that is built off of existing audiences and existing demand. So if you have a very innovative product that's very that's very unknown, I would say Amazon is not the place to launch it, right? But if you have a product that you think is there is demand for this product, it's just not being served properly, then launch on Amazon, begin to get that sales, take that money, invest into building the business, build it off Amazon as well, and then you can begin to scale. That's smart. Yeah. Love it. Okay, Mr. Rob Witt, cool. if anybody wants to contact you, can they email you, text Absolutely. you, call you? Yep. Middle so of the night, weekends? Whenever you want to, I'll answer. Uh, my email is Rob W at AGM agency.com. AGM stands for attention grabbing media. So AGM agency.com. So Rob is always very interested in helping people. So if you guys That's have right. questions about Amazon or you want to find out more about how we can help you here at happy AGM, to help out. Uh, Rob will be happy to jump in. That's right. Rob, great interview. Thanks for having me. Thanks, and sir. thanks for it. allowing me to talk and tell my story a, a, a bunch. Always. So it's very, very uh, interesting. Hopefully it provided value to the audience and uh, we'll have to do this again with more strategy and more value to give out to the Amazon sellers or anybody that wants to get started on Amazon. We did do a training yes. for Amazon beginners, people that want to get started. If you, right. guys can, you guys can look it up. It was Mr. Rob Witt and myself out there. And right. if you guys go to Manuel Suarez's YouTube channel yep. and you search on the playlist for a uh, playlist called uh, AGM Live Workshops, you're going to see one of those in which is Rob and myself teaching people about Amazon and how to get started on Amazon, how to get your brand going from scratch. Yep. It was meant for beginners, not for Amazon sellers. You guys can check that out. All That's right? right. Thank see you very you, much. See you guys in the next one. Well, I'm ready for the beach now. Let's go back to the beach, brother. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go. <laughs>